One more mom calls complaining. My son listened to your station and then he flunked out of school. Wait, wait, wait. Well, how are you going to learn to party at school, mom? Welcome back, cruisers. Thank you for joining me today as we wind back the clock for the decade of high fashion and high rises with Grand Theft Auto Vice City, the definitive edition. Vice City is one of the best selling games on the PlayStation 2 and firmly cemented Rockstar as the industry leader in open world gaming and innovative gameplay. It's a game that oozes personality from palm laden beaches to iconic soundtracks from the greatest hits of the 1980s. With the Definitive Edition receiving some much needed love in the form of updates and fixes, now's the perfect time to jump into Vice City to see what all the fuss is about. But be warned, the game ain't no stroll down the beach. Just like its retro-inspired game setting, Vice City can also be unforgiving and brutal, which can be a little intimidating to players new to the game. So to help you survive the decade of greed, excess, and cheesy one-liners, we've pulled together 11 quick tips that you need to know. Spoiler free. One. One of the most influential aspects of Vice City has to be the iconic soundtrack that came out with the game. The radio stations that play while you cruise about town feature a roster of 80s gold that define the decade, making traversal of the map a genuine treat. Stations like V-Rock with Laszlo, Flash FM, Emotion, and Wave pump out hit after hit, providing the perfect soundtrack to the resurrection of our protagonist, Tommy Vicetti. One problem you may encounter though, is that the default station for different vehicles changes depending on which one you're in. But fear not, the in-game menu has you sorted. Here, you can actually set your preferred station, meaning you'll always be ready to rock out to your favorite station or tune no matter what ride you may have. As an additional benefit, changing the stations in the menu allows you to sit back and listen to some awesome tunes while the game is paused. It's a great option if you need a quick break from your ongoing gangland warfare. Two. I'm not gonna lie, Vice City is one of my all time favorite games, but coming back to it all these years later, I found myself dying a lot, more than a lot actually. Your health doesn't last long in a big gunfight, and Tommy is a chunky piece of bullet sponge for enemies. So take my advice, get body armor and save your game before you head off for a mission. Body armor provides you with an extra 100 health before your hearts or your main health energy starts to deplete, and that can be the difference between life and a cruel cool restart of your mission. Armor can be purchased early on from the various ammunition stores for about $200, but if you're the thrifty gamer, you'll find plenty of spots on the map that house free body armor just waiting for you to collect. Locations on the map such as Ocean Beach and Washington Beach hold body armor placements that will spawn regularly should you need them at any point in the game. So learning a few of the key locations to find body armor will always save you plenty of hassle down the track in those key and hard to complete missions. The other cool thing is that if you complete the vigilante missions up to level 12, your body armor will be upgraded to 150, giving you much needed extra protection to help you face those really tough gunfights you're gonna face later on in the game. Three. There are plenty of side missions on offer that help to not only extend the experience outside of the main storyline, but also provide decent benefits to the player in their ongoing quest to dominate the city. These missions include the vigilante missions, ambulance missions, firefighter missions, taxi drive missions, and of course, the pizza boy mission. Whilst all of the vehicle missions provide a handy upgrade for Tommy in their own right, the pizza boy is a nice, easy one to complete, with the reward being an increase of your base health stat to 150 points. Riffing off the second tip about body armor, extra health will not go astray, as Tommy tries to take on a city full of gangs and thugs armed to the teeth with death-dealing weaponry. To kick off the pizza boy delivery missions, you just need to find one of the scooters located outside any of the well-stacked pizza restaurants across Vice City. 
There are three in total and you can find them in downtown Little Haiti and Vice Point. Once you've found the scooter, simply jump on the bike and press up to start the mission. You'll be given six pizzas and sent out to deliver these to markers on your map. At the first level, you'll be asked to deliver one pizza. Second level, two pizzas. Third level, three pizzas and so on as you go up the chain. Once you get past level six though, you'll need to go back to the restaurant to top up your pizza stock as you can only carry six pizzas at any one time. One of the trickier things about this mission though is just figuring out how to deliver the pizzas. When you've located your customer, simply line them up on a 90 degree angle to the right side of your bike. Hold your targeting button, in PlayStation would be L1, and then press the circle button to do the action to deliver the pizza. On occasion, your pizza will miss the mark, and that's okay. You can actually jump off your bike, get around, and actually push the pizza towards the customer. They'll pay you for the trouble, and then you can be on your way to deliver the next round. Complete these missions from level 1 through to 12 consecutive, without failing, and you'll get the reward. It's worth it, trust me. 4. Controlling Tommy to get around Vice City is generally quite straightforward. There's not too many buttons that you have to navigate to get him around from point A to point B. There are a few little more intricate controls that can make your life a lot easier. One example mentioned before was how to deliver the pizzas. Another one that you can easily miss is the sprint mechanic, where Tommy goes from doing a jog to a full blown run. This is achieved by spamming the X button if you're on PlayStation. It takes a few presses before he sets off fully. Completing the ambulance missions to level 12 will also give you endless sprint, which can be handy when you're without a vehicle and you need to cross some serious ground. Another significant control tip is using the L1 and R1 buttons when using the helicopters or planes to turn midair. These controls also apply to the RC missions where controlling the vehicles can be tricky at best. Knowing this tip gives you a lot more control over your movement, it can make the difference between passing the mission or throwing your controller in frustration. Finally, another really simple thing to know is using R1 for hand braking in vehicles. Done right, this feature lets you get the all important drift around a corner that both looks insanely cool as well as keeping your momentum up as you get away from the cops. A final tip that you should know is that you can press forward on the sniper rifle to zoom in. I know it sounds simple, but I missed it myself and it made a mission much harder than it needed to be. Five. One tip you take away from watching today's video is to save the game and save it often. It's not the most exciting tip on the list, but it's probably one of the most important. The game is unforgiving, and it's easy to go from cruising down the strip to fighting for your life as a wanted criminal, or throwing Tommy head first into water where a quick and sudden death awaits you. You heard that right, people. Tommy doesn't take any crap, but Tommy also doesn't swim so well, so that tempting ramp drawing you in as you hurl down the road at 100 clicks an hour could be your undoing. If you've beaten a tough mission, found a hidden package or mystery weapon, or some cool loot, even completed a wicked stun jump that you've been working on for ages, do yourself a favour and take the time to save the game before you do something reckless. It happens to the best of us, trust me. Initially, you have the Ocean View Hotel as your main save spot and it's marked by the tape cassette on your map. But soon enough, you'll be able to buy properties around the map, which act as alternative save locations along your adventure. Not only that, but many offer a garage or two to store your favorite set of wheels. So it's worth spending your hard earned coin to open them up and have a place to save your progress and a cool vehicle as well. As a bonus, when you save at these locations, your health is restored back to full and it gives you a fallback if you do something stupid. <laughs> Death in Vice City also means the loss of all your weapons and ammo that you've collected, making save games an absolute must if you want to max out that weapon wheel and keep those rare weapons you've worked so hard to earn. Get in the habit of saving, don't rely on the autosave, and you'll be a smooth criminal. Six. Grand Theft Auto Vice City helped pioneer the open world gaming we all know and love today. To keep the world interesting for players to explore, a ton of hidden secrets litter the map, providing real tangible rewards for those who are willing to seek them out. They range from unique stunt jumps to Easter eggs, one of them literally. But the one to keep your eye out for are the hidden packages. There are a total of 100 across the Vice City map which are required to achieve the distinction 
of 100% completion rate. Whilst collecting all 100 might not necessarily be on your list, it is worth your while to collect the ones that you see while you're completing missions or traversing the map. Why, you may ask? Well, for every 10 hidden packages that you find, the player is treated to a reward. It starts with body armor at 10, goes to chainsaw at 20, all the way up to special vehicles and aircraft spawns led down the line. For rewards like the body armor and various weapons you'll earn, they will respawn at your bases like the Ocean View Hotel or later in the game outside of Vesetti Estate. After you complete the Ricardo Diaz mission, rub out. The list of rewards includes items like the Colt Python, Flamethrower, Combat Sniper, Minigun, Rocket Launcher, and even military vehicles later on. So it's definitely worth your while to grab them as you're passing through. Savvy. A guarantee of any playthrough of Vice City is the inevitable wanted levels and long arm lore that comes with it. Whether you're caught jacking a car or trading bullets with your local gangbangers, it's inevitable that your actions will draw the attention the Atharita, which will be indicated by the number of stars in the top right of your heads up display. As you'd expect, the higher the number of stars, the more fierce the law will hunt you down. One star means you will receive attention from police officers that happen to be nearby, but once you get to two stars, it means you will be actively pursued, and trust me on this, they are tenacious. Getting busted by the police will also result in the loss of all your weapons and ammo, and some money on top of failing any active mission you happen to be on. The intensity increases as the star chain goes up, from SWAT to FBI, and finally the army being called in to take Tommy down. The easiest way to get you out of these sticky situations depends on your wanted level. At one star, you can easily keep your nose clean and stay on the move, avoid the police and any damage, and eventually the star will fade away. At two stars, your best options include finding bribe icons, which are scattered across the map and will reduce your wanted level by one star. Another solution is to change your clothes, which can be done at any one of your safe houses that feature clothing or at a clothing store such as Raphael's. And this will instantly clear up a two star rating. Beyond that, the recommended course of action is getting your wheels into a pain spray garage. Here, your car will get a shiny new paint job complete with repairs to any damage. You'll need to be careful when you first exit, as your star level will be flashing, meaning any trouble you might cause will instantly reactivate your wanted level. But if you manage to keep your cool, stay calm, and avoid any damage for a few moments, it'll eventually go away and you'll be back on the good side of the law. It might cost $100 to use the pain spray, but trust me, it's well worth it to avoid getting busted. Eight. It's super easy to miss some of the many activities in the game if you don't know what you're looking for. An example is the awesome stump bike mission called PCJ Playground, where you get this motorbike and fly like an eagle on your bike, performing insane jumps along a timed course. Kicking this mission off involves jumping on the bike outside the standing Vice Point building in the Vice Point district. Another notable side mission are the RC or radio control missions. To trigger these, you will need to find yourself a Top Fun Van. It's a distinctive reference to another 80s staple, Top Gun, and these distinctive looking vans can be found outside of Vice Point Sand Track, top level of the North Point Mall, or the freight and cargo terminal at Escobar International Airport. Another very missable set of side content can be found at the Hyman Memorial Stadium, located in the far northwest section of the map. Don't get me wrong, you'll likely stumble across this area in your playthrough. I mean, it's pretty hard to miss. Like me though, you'll probably wander around it looking for secrets and a way to get in. The front of the building has a heap of doors and stairs hinting at an entry, but with no noticeable way in, most people will probably call it a day and move on but you can actually access the building if you go there after 8.30 p.m. at night in game time, and you'll find that it hosts three different events, Hot Ring, Blood Ring, and Dirt Ring. Ew. But the missions themselves are actually really quite cool. They're a lot different to the ones you typically do in game, and they're really fun to complete, with a fair bit of challenge attached to them as well. 
If you're looking to get that all gratifying 100% completion rate, you'll also need to complete those three missions to get that as well. So if you're not looking to do every single thing in the game, the events are optional, but they're pretty fun and worth having a look at. There's more optional side content that can be found along the game. Things like Cone Crazy, which is located on top of the multi-story car park in Washington Beach. Boat challenges that you can unlock if you buy the dockyards, as well as races that are unlocked by purchasing Sunshine Auto in Little Havana. Needless to say, traversing the map, exploring around and checking things out usually rewards the player very well. So have some fun. Nine. Vice City features a wide array of vehicles and options for you to take and traverse as you go across the map, but sometimes it can be hard to figure out the right transport for what you need. Here are four that stand out from the crowd, including locations on where to find them. The first one is the Infernus. This is a sports car and it's based on a real life Lamborghini, boasting a top speed of 240 k's an hour. It's rated amongst the best for speed, handling and overall style. And you can find this car driven throughout the city on occasion, but if you're looking for a lock-in, head out to the North Point Mall and check out the car park right next door. You can also find this car regularly in front of Ricardo Diaz's mansion, so well worth checking out. It's super fast, super good at handling, and well worth thrashing around the city. Another cool vehicle is the Cheetah. The Cheetah is based on the Ferrari Testarossa from the 1980s and clocks a top speed of 230 k's an hour, making it a much sought after vehicle. But you can actually go one better and get the VCPD Cheetah. This is the one that's actually used by the undercover version of the cops in Vice City. It might be identical for all intended purposes, but there's just something kind of cool about having this undercover bad boy. You can catch yourself one in Little Havana in the passage to the left of the Little Havana police station. Alternatively, you can simply steal one from the cops direct. All you need to do is get yourself up to a three star wanted level and wait for the VCPD cheater to show up, ready to take you down. Third on the list is the Sparrow. I've spent hours flying around the world of Vice City and trust me, it never gets old. For a classy way to see the sights, get your hands on a Sparrow helicopter. This little number is agile and fast, and better than that, it's easily available early game in both the grassy areas across from the Lynx View apartment in Vice Point and on a roof in Little Haiti. It also spawns near a set of stairs in downtown, as well as the roof of apartment 3C in Ocean Beach. Yes, that apartment 3C. You'll access it once you complete the mission rub out with Ricardo Diaz. Last but certainly not least is the PCJ600, based on the classic Suzuki GSX. This motorbike is not exactly the rarest vehicle in the game, but it's definitely one of the most versatile. It's light and fast, hitting a top speed of 190 clicks per hour. But what makes this one stand out is the acceleration and the ability to launch this bike off the many, many ramps you'll find that make this set of wheels a must have for the person on the go. If you're like me though, you can never seem to find one when you need it. So it's good to know there are a few locations where you'll be sure to find one each and every time. One key spot is near the police headquarters at the base of the Vice Point building in Washington Beach, the same one that triggers the PCJ challenge. Other key places include Howland Pete's Biker Emporium in downtown, the building north of the Pagan Spray in Washington Beach, Ocean Bay Marina in Washington Beach, Generally, you'll find them nearly every time in a car park, particularly multi-story car parks, so definitely check them out. 10. Although Vice City doesn't have the expansive size of some of the more contemporary open world outings, there's plenty going on to distract and entertain players. There's also not a lot of hand holding as you make your way through the game, so it's quite easy for players to get lost or lose sight of the next objective, mission or challenge. If you find yourself getting a little lost, the menu has a few options that can definitely help you out and get you started in the right direction. One improvement in the remaster is the ability to place a marker on the map, and this triggers a GPS style marking on the mini map which will help guide your way around Vice City. The map also features icons for save points, places of interest, and general markers that relate to specific objectives that might be related to the current mission you're on so it's well worth checking out the map if you're stuck and not sure where to go. 
Another option in the menu is one that I've used on more occasions than I'd like to admit, but it's the brief section. It does a really good job of listing out all your most recent tasks and conversations. Beyond that, there are additional features that cover things like graphics, audio, as well as the control scheme and the layout. But arguably one of the most engaging aspects of the menu is the stats section. This provides real-time information on everything from your completion rate to missions that you have completed, as well as your performance on various side missions, activities, challenges, Easter eggs, and everything in between. Not only is this a great place to check your progress, but a bloody funny collection of statistics of Tommy's adventures in Vice City. I mean, you wanna know how many fishes have been fed? The stats menu will tell you everything you need to know. 11. I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. This game can be brutal. Not in a from software kind of way, but in an old school game that has rock hard AI kind of way. I've had a few missions that have taken well over an hour to beat, with many fails or deaths that seem kind of unfair, ridiculous, glitchy, or just plain out of my control. Vice City contains some of the harder missions in the franchise's history, which are well known for driving even the calmest of players to control the breaking frenzies. I'm not gonna go through each mission, or give a play-by-play -play on how to succeed. There are plenty of guides out there with great videos and people who have been part of this community for many years putting out amazing content. So I'd highly recommend to check them out, watch their videos and show those guys some love because they've done some really good work. My advice is more for the gamer who wants to beat the mission without a guide. My tips are as follows. Prepare, think ahead, plan and consider the future. Oftentimes, it's been a lack of planning that has caused my downfall, and taking the extra time to get the right equipment, vehicle, weapon, or method of escape has been the difference between success and failure. The next point is that doing the same thing over and over again is indeed the definition of insanity. If it's not working after 10, 20, 30, or 50 tries, maybe it's for a reason. Try doing it differently and see what happens. My personal hell came with a mission called The Job, where I spent way too many attempts trying the same approach to the latter part of the mission, only to fail each and every time. It's only when I planned a different method that I suddenly completed the mission and was able to finally let out a sigh of relief and move forward in my game. Finally, do some other side missions or challenges. The vehicle missions all provide some sort of upgrades, Tommy, that help make things a little easier as do the collections of hidden packages. Besides being fun, they help break up the game when the difficulty spikes get you down. Honestly, grab a chopper, crank the radio as the sun sets on Vice City. It's a beautiful experience, and come on, deserve some r and for all your hard work. An honorable mention has to go out to Sunshine Autos, which is definitely worth purchasing as soon as it's available. Firstly, Sunshine Autos is a brilliant safe location right near the airport, the docks, and near the main roadways as well. It also has its own personal pain spray, which is just absolutely magic, with a whopping four garage spaces to hold the most coveted of your rides. It's also worth your time to collect the vehicle lists that are located in the same garage area. They'll unlock special customized vehicles that will display in your showroom, and they're well worth the price of entry. Trust me, you won't regret it. Well, that rounds out our list for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I really hope you got some helpful tips along the way. Putting aside all the controversy surrounding the Definitive Edition release, I'm really enjoying getting back into the city of Vice, cruising through this beautiful world full of nostalgia and plain old fun. The game shows its age in a lot of ways, don't get me wrong, but there is something special about the recipe that draws you back to the streets of Vice City, even long after the credits have rolled. I really hope the tips help you to enjoy your time in Vice City. Thanks for choosing to spend some of your precious and valuable time with us today. As always, stay amazing, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you around, Tommy. Okay, Mr. Lance Vance Dance. Gracias, amigo. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo.